Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show where we try to make sense of these crazy numbers in the Arizona real estate market. And there's a lot of crazy numbers out there nationally. Big question of the day, has the market peaked? Have we reached the top? Are we going down from here? Right now we're at 7,414 homes available in this market. We're going to kind of take a look at the numbers and see what we need to see to call the top, find out how close we are, um, but only if you smash that like button. So I really like it when you guys smash the like button. What that does, the reason YouTubers ask for it all the time is it just tells YouTube that the, you like the video, so they show it to more people. They put it in front of it, and I appreciate that. And um, so there was an article that came out in the Cromford Market Report this morning that addresses whether or not we fit the top of the market. Now, if you're a real estate agent and you're not subscribing to the Cromford Report, you're missing a leg in your table. Um, it's a lot of data that helps you understand where the market's going. But hey, I'm kind of sharing it here too anyway, right? So, so what do we need to see? If you're a watcher of my videos at all, you know that I like to keep track of seven-day moving average. And it's essentially just showing where supply is in relationship with demand. And you can see here that this blue line just is kind of staying right about the same area. I mean, sure, there's some little ups and downs. This is Memorial Day. This is uh, Fourth of July. That's Labor Day. So there's seasonal trends. We'll see a huge dip when we get into Thanksgiving and Christmas, especially Christmas. But overall, these numbers are, if you were to look at an average, we're averaging about 4,000 for both. So the market's just, whatever's coming on is getting gobbled up. There's different weeks where we're within 100 units, and then we're within four or 500 units. But those numbers have to be much broader in order for the direction, the current direction of the market to change. In other words, if we think we're at the top of the market, we'll know we're at the top of the market when inventory is way above where our sales numbers are. So right now our sales numbers are running between 3,400 and 3,600 a week, and our listings are coming between 3,900 and 4,100 a week. If that continues week after week after week, why would you expect a change? There's nothing changing. Well, what kind of changes do we look for? And one of the things that we look for is where we're at with regards to the listings. And I just showed one track, but here's where we're at now compared to 2020. And what you can see there is that we thought we were gonna cross. When I say we, I thought we were gonna track up here and pass 2020, but look, we're getting right into the, exactly the same seasonal trend that we did last year and the year before and the year before that. Listings always go down over the holidays. Nothing's going to change that from what I can see. Now, the Cromford market, they track average list price per square foot. And this is the under contract price. But the important part of this graph that I want you to look at is the difference between the brown line and the red line. And what they're saying, despite some observers speculating that a market top has taken place, the data emphatically suggests otherwise. Here's the average dollars per square foot daily chart for all areas and types within the Arizona Regional Marketing Database. What it's showing is, see this gap between the brown line and the red line? The brown line is the list price. The red line is what they paid for it. So this was back in that frenzied part around April and May, right in here. People were listing their homes and everybody was overbuilding. Now we're running about 46% of the homes are going above list, but this line has closed and gotten really tight. There has to be a gap there. In order for us to say that the market has reached its top, these lines have to cross. The red line has to start showing up below the brown line. In other words, people are not getting their asking price. Until that line crosses, we're still going to see price increases. And we've seen our prices go up by $10 per square foot. And we don't see them coming down. You can see by this graph that they're getting bigger and bigger. In fact, it's, it's actually gone up the past couple of days in the data. So it's important to know that if we've reached the top of the market, you will have seen it first in a graph like this. Now, two weeks doesn't make a trend, but if we're looking at four weeks of data and that gap is widening between the, the list price and the actual close price, 
then it's safe to say that we're going to be heading in a different direction. I also like to look at months of supply. Now, if you go back historically, you can look here. This is uh, 2011 in January. We had 5.1 months supply of homes. That means if no other homes came on the market, it would take us five months to get rid of the ones that are here based on the current sales per week. Keep in mind, right now we have 3,600 sales per week, 4,100 new homes come up, so our month supply is less than a month. Just in less than a month, everything's gone. We got down to a half a month here in April. Remember going back and showing you how frantic it was in April and May? Well, we had less than a half a month supply. It was brutal. We're starting to come up, but we're not screaming up. Now, if you look here, and you go back to 2013, this is June, how long did it take us to go from one and a half months supply of homes to what you can see on the chart there, which is 5.4? It took till January the next year. But in the meantime, you could see that this line was going straight up. It was safe, very safe at this point, right in here to say home prices are gonna start coming down. And they did. Those that are hoping for a crash, did you buy here? That's a real question, because if you're hoping for a crash, what is your indicator that now's the time to get in? And I hope that if we do have a crash, that you still have a job. But my point is that took well over six months to get up to a five-month supply. Now, there were many dips, climbing, dip, climbing, goes on and on when it comes to supply. So we have to see this go up. Until we see that line climb up, nobody can say that we've reached the top. So we have to see a number that gives us comfort or hope or dismay that says the market has reached its top and starting to change. Now, what can make inventory start to climb up? A sharp rise in interest rates, um, severe lack of affordability, um, some type of financial calamity, war, economic collapse, a lot of things. But it's going to show up there. There's no way that you can have a huge spike in interest rates and we're still going to have less than a month's supply at homes. Impossible. So it will show up there first. And you will get plenty of advance notice that we're starting to peak instead of just saying, oh, look, it's peaking, it's peaking. There are parts in the country, Idaho's one of them, where it's kind of showing that they've peaked. That's Boise, Idaho. Uh, but it remains to be seen. We'll have to continue to watch them. So in the meantime, don't forget to smash that like button. Thank you in advance for subscribing. Take on the day and have a good rest of the week. Mm -hmm.